Hello guys, welcome back to TCFC. My name is Tom. Today we are going to be talking about kits. Now, it should be pretty easy to make a football kit, I think. First of all, you just choose a colour, which generally has already been decided. Second of all, you just need to put some gambling sponsors on the shirt just to make sure everyone knows you've sold your soul to the devil. And after that, you just got to pick a design. Now, I assume normally that design has been chosen by the kit suppliers such as Nike or Adidas. So all you have to do is pick the one that doesn't look stupid. Now, some of the time, we've actually had some pretty good kits that I've liked a lot. Other times, they've been pretty damn poor. So today, I've decided to rank the last 10 kits we've had from worst to best. Let's do this. TCFC. In last place, and I think this will not come as a surprise to many people, it's this year's kit, the 2021 season. Not only has our team been terrible this year, but they've also been playing in an absolutely horrible kit. I hate it. I hate it with every fibre of my being. Oh, it's awful. It's an abomination. Um, so let's start with the collar, the thing I hate most about it. Now, I'm generally not a huge collar fan, but I have seen ones that look good. Our kits in the late 90s, early 2000s, we had a white collar on that, and I thought they looked pretty good. Uh, but this, no, awful. So if you look closely at the collar, like you can just see that it's it doesn't fit very well, it always looks scruffy, it's never tight and neat, um, it looks like it needs ironing constantly, um, so I just think it looks very tacky. Um, if the buttons are done up, it looks stupid, if the buttons are not, un not done up, it looks even stupider. So that's one thing I hate about the kit. And let's get on to the badge. So for years and years, we've had the badge sewn onto the kit, but this time it's not sewn on, it's just like sort of stuck on with, I don't know, with glue or something. I don't know how it works. But either way, it, it looks rubbish and it really adds into the fact that our key kit not just doesn't look good stylishly, but also it, it just looks cheap and tacky. Those two things are big enough for me to put it down in last place. Up next is the 1819 season, which was a season that we played some pretty decent football in, but our home kit was not very good. It's a very similar design to the two previous seasons we've had, apart from they decided to add these two white bits at the top of the shirt. Now, I didn't like that, and I thought it just made us look like a sort of wannabe sailor or something. They're trying to look like Popeye, I'm not sure. Either way, it didn't look good. Uh, it's very overcomplicated. It's something I really hate in football shirts when they just put, I, I know what we'll do, we'll put a piece of random white on the top of the shirt. That'll make it look good. It doesn't. Anyway, so for the reasons that it wasn't very comfortable when you put it on, probably due to the excessive bits at the top and the fact that it didn't look very good, it definitely belongs down the bottom of this list. Eighth place, it is the 12-13 season kit, and I kind of like this kit, but there's just something about it, it doesn't look quite right. Uh, the away kit for this, both third and second, I thought looked quite stylish, and when I look at this one, I do think it looks kind of stylish, but there's just something about it that doesn't quite make sense to me. And I had a look at it, had a look long and hard, and my conclusion, my analysis, is that it's the black collar. I don't think that the black and the blue really work. We are a team that's often had a white collar, as I previously mentioned, and I think that actually looked pretty good. But, you know, if it wasn't for that, I think that would look decent. If the collar was blue or the collar was white, then I think it would have worked. But for this season, for some reason, we were definitely going for a kind of edgier design. We had our electric pink away kit, which looked absolutely amazing. And I will do a video for the away kits, I assure you. Uh, but yeah, it didn't work for me, which is why it's so low down on the list. And as we move into seventh place, we're looking at the 13-14 season kit. <clears throat> now, this is in stark contrast to the season before where we'd gone with the cool, edgy kit that you, you know, could have worn to a nightclub. And then we decided to go with completely bog standard. And that's how this, you know, that's how our team was that year. We were a very basic team, quite limited in our abilities. And I think it's really reflected in this kit. I do like this kit, but it's just very unimaginative. I like how they've gone back to the, to the penguin shirt style. It really harks back to the blues of old. But I'm just looking at the picture right now. It just is quite boring, to be honest. There's nothing that's very interesting about it. I quite like the sponsor, Nicolites, which, I don't know, it was a time when... Blues are a bit of a laughing stock, and it's a bit of a laughing stock of a sponsor, to be honest. So, again, I like the kit, don't hate it, not bad, not terrible, but it's just uninteresting, so that's why it's placed fairly low on the list. 
All right, sixth place, and it is the 1617 kit. And I'm happy to say that from this point forward, I actually really like all of these kits. So this one, it was a very simple kit. It was just plain old blue with a nice gambling sponsor on the front. And um, there's a little bit of white, a little bit of black. It was a very simple kit, which would imply it was a simple time for blues. It was not simple. This was the famous Rowett Zola Red Nap season, and the fairly standard kit is not reflected in how the football was that season. I don't have too much to say about this kit apart from the fact that it was a very simple kit. I like it. It's only criticism for me, is it's it's pretty boring. There's not much going on in it. It's just a standard blue kit. Um, for a standard championship team, and that's how it felt while we were wearing it. So that's why it doesn't get any higher than sixth place. All right, on to fifth place. Now this kit is actually very similar to its predecessor on the list, which was also its predecessor chronologically. It's the younger brother of the 1617 kit. It's a 1718 shirt. Very similar shirt for a very similar season. Now, of course, the previous season we had three managers. We would also go on to have three managers this season. And that was, of course, Redknapp, Cotterill and Muck. Uh, very similar seasons uh, with very similar kits. The difference with this kit is that whereas the previous kit, it was just blue, not trying to do anything else, just keep the fans happy, keep it blue, there won't be any complaints with that. This one decided to put a little bit of white on the collar and a sort of little white line on the shoulders. And it's just that sort of thing that adds a little bit of, you know, je ne sais quoi to a kit. And I think it made us look quite good on the pitch. It's just a shame that our performances were largely, absolutely abysmal that season. However, at least we looked good while we were doing it. Okay, we're on to the Champions League spots for this list, and it is the 14-15 season kit, which of course was Rowett's first season and Lee Clark's last season. Now, I like this kit because it's got quite a sort of stylish colour to it. It's a little bit darker than the usual royal blue. I'd go, f I'd say it's probably an electric blue, if that's a real thing. It's also got quite a nice collar to it. Like, as I've said before, I'm not a huge fan of collars in general, but I think this one pulls it off quite nicely. It's the same color as the shirt, so I think it looks really good. It's a nice all blue attire. You've got the Zappe go on the front, which is sort of a, you know, it's a kind of fun word. People are like, oh, what Zappe go? And you'll tell them, I don't know. I have no idea what Zappe go is. Some kind of payment system with the ground that doesn't work. In addition to that, it was a comfy shirt to wear. I quite liked it. Uh, it's another one where I actually think the away kit was better than the home kit. But, you know, I liked that one. I thought our team looked good when they are playing in it. And that's why it's finishing up quite high on the list. Okay, so we're on to third place. And we've got the Hewton season kit, which is the 11-12 season, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, it was a nice shade of blue, and it's mostly blue of blue, apart from uh, the little white collar and a few little white bits around the kit. And I just think that the colours work nicely and we look good. Uh, it probably helps that we were winning a lot of games when we were wearing that kit more than we've won since, to be honest. It had, yeah, as I say, the colour was nice. It looked good. I thought our team looked stylish and dangerous while they're playing it. Obviously, again, we had a nice, interesting sponsor. Uh, I was one of those mystery sponsors where you don't know what they are or what they do. It was in the phase when I think Carson Jung was still our owner. So we had this mystery sponsor that may or may not have changed during the season. I can't remember. Either way, I thought the team looked good. It wasn't like, it was not trying to do anything too amazing. But what it did do, it did well. So that's why it gets numero trois. Okay, and on to second place, and we have got the 1516 kit, and I gotta say, I love this kit. I know it's a gimmick kit, and it's definitely a gimmick kit. It's very different from most blue styles that we'd normally go with. So you've got the slightly darker color and the big old white stripe down the middle. Um, I just think it worked really well. The, even the sponsor is barely noticeable, which is quite good. It fits quite nicely in. And of course, we've got the retro badge. So I prefer the blues badge, I think the Traditional blues badge is one of the best badges around. You know, no one else has a badge like that. But in this instance, we had the cool different badge. I really liked it. And to be honest, and we played well for a lot of that season. When I think of this kit, I think of John Terrell scoring goals. I think of Clayton Dalton scoring goals. I think of Viv Solomon scoring goals. It's a t it's a it's a kit that finishes high on this list, partly because of its gimmick value, which has completely worked on me, and also because of the fact that we were playing well during the time we were wearing it. So I think it's a well-deserved second place. And finally, number one, it's been in shot the entire time. It's the Boyle Sports shirt from the 1920 season. I may as well get up and put it on, actually. There we go, take all this. Okay, I just... Pretend that didn't happen. 
All right, so I'm wearing this kit now so I can actually do the analysis. This is the only kit I've got on me at the moment, so it's the only one that I can do the analysis while wearing. So let me tell you what I like about this kit. First off, we've got these stylish Adidas stripes on the top. So that is a bit of a nostalgia kit, especially probably for the older fans, because we did have a kit in the past, in the sort of Trevor Francis days. I think it was an Adidas kit, like this one, but with the, like the, no, that's not Adidas, this is Adidas, with the, like the leaf, the plant type Adidas thing, not this one. Anyway, it looked good back in the day and it looked good now. Another thing that I liked, I didn't think I'd like, these yellow bits here, have a look at this, like, I just think it looks nice. Uh, but I didn't think it would, but it had quite the little ones on the, on the sleeves as well. Pretty cool. The colour scheme as well, very nice blue, and the sleeves, like who would have thought it? Honestly, when I saw this come out, I thought it looked garbage, but actually, I love it. It's a favourite kit, wear around the house all the time. It's more comfortable than a lot of the blues kits that I've got. Um, and yeah, I, it's probably the most comfortable blues kit I've got. That's why I love it. It's my favourite kit to wear around the house, as I say. And for the aforementioned reasons, and also the positive emotional feelings I have towards this kit, I imagine Yukovic booming those headers in. That's why it's number one. I realize it's probably not gonna be everyone's, but it is mine. Okay guys, that's the end of the video. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know what you think in the comments. Do you think that my choice of kits is absolutely atrocious or do you think that I've actually got amazing taste? Let me know and let me know if you'd like to see other kit videos because I'm thinking about doing one for our way kits and our third kits and also kits from bygone eras such as the, you know, the, the noughties and the 10 kits before that. Uh, don't forget to like the video if you like it and subscribe to TCFC because it makes me feel all warm and fuzzy inside to know that you enjoy my videos. Anyway, that is the end. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day and keep right on to the end of the road. Goodbye.